So welcome everyone to this district community meeting. Uh, we're going to be welcoming Councilmember Josh Chapman in a few minutes. I'd like to introduce myself, Diane Perro, and I'm the Director of Business and Community um, Engagement at the City of Davis. Right now you can see all the staff who will be um, assisting you all tonight, um, hopefully having a great experience and in interacting with your council member. Um, if I could see the next slide, please, Carrie. So this is our agenda for this evening. Um, I've already introduced myself. Let me go ahead and introduce you to the rest of our staff. We all work in the city manager's office for the city of Davis. Um, Carrie Dyer, probably the longest standing member of our team, um, has been with the city of Davis for many, many years. And she is um, heading up some work we're doing with the neighborhood. So you will get to know her. Barbara Archer working with me and the communications team. So we're very lucky Barbara has joined the city a few years back. Um, and Dalgoberto Fieros is a fairly new member of the city manager's office in the city of Davis. We're lucky to have him and we uh, snagged him from the city of Winter. So he has a lot of experience, but fairly new to Davis. So this is the city team. We're gonna be on board here to be taking notes and to be helping Josh. Um, Josh is gonna lead you through um, the materials he's provided for you tonight. And I just would like uh, to ask you if you have questions at any point during his talk, if you start putting them in the chat and we'll call them out to Josh um, as we go along, especially if we get a lot on one topic, we'll be consolidating them into key questions for him. We'll see how the, how the time goes with that. Also, if you have uh, other comments and you want to um, make sure we get them, we don't think that Josh is going to watch them super closely while he's talking, but we have staff members here to uh, write them down and make sure we get them recorded. Also, this meeting is being recorded and will be available on our website, as will the PowerPoint. And to answer the first question, the meeting was um, put out on Facebook and on our website. And if you would like to join um, the email list so that you could be notified by email next time, we'll show you how to do that at the very end, or you could put your email in the chat section. Thank you, Josh Chapman, council member for District 5. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Diane said, my name is Josh Chapman, uh, the newly um, elected city council member for District 5. Um, first, I want to thank um, Diane, Carrie, Barbara, and Dago for being here this evening um, and working with me over the past couple of weeks to, to put this together. Um, when I thought about running and decided to run, one of the things that I, I talked to a lot of folks about and heard from a lot of voters in South Davis was um, a sense and a feeling that South Davis hadn't had a representative on state city council for a while and that they felt they didn't have a voice. Um, and I committed um, during the campaign season and, and in conversations thereafter um, to, to hold meetings like this, have discussions um, and then find ways to, to, to do outreach to, um, to, to the district that I represent. Um, so that is, you know, part of the reason why we're here this evening. Um, first, I want to thank, um, thank you all for coming here tonight. I also want to thank um, all the people who, um, who voted for me um, and trusted me to be your representative. Um, and if you don't live in, in the district um, and you still live in South Davis, then um, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate your support uh, during this four year term that I have. Um, I live in South Davis. I've been here for over 10 years. Uh, my wife, uh, Athena, grew up in South Davis, attended Pioneer Elementary School, so we have a long connection to this community. Um, I have two sons, Owen and Quinton. They both attend Montgomery Elementary School. Uh, one is in the fourth grade and one is in the sixth grade. Um, so again, we, we are um, South Davis residents and have a, a lot of, um, of our heart in this community. Um, when I'm not dealing with city council stuff or, or coaching sports teams, um, my day job is I'm the owner of Armadillo Music. Uh, located in downtown Davis. Uh, many of you may know that, um, but that's um, another part of, of what I do in this community. Um, so when I step back and think about why I wanted to have a meeting like this, um, you know, I think one of the things I want to do is describe what I want to accomplish through any public process. Um, so this, this evening's meeting was, uh, is a way for me to put a face to names, uh, for me to get contact information from everybody, um, and for me to hear from you directly. 
Um, but also, you know, to go over kind of that 30,000 foot level um, happenings in the city. Um, so we're going to go over some some things that are happening uh, citywide that have been going on. Uh, and we'll also talk about some uh, specific things that are, are going on and happening right here uh, in District 5. On the screen, you can see um, District 5. Uh, that is the newly uh, created district, which encompasses everything south of um, I-80 and also the small uh, piece of land over there off First Street uh, in downtown Davis behind McCoonies. Um, there's that small section of housing there that is also in District 5. Um, another piece that I just want to, you know, to talk about and, and, and relay to everyone here this evening, um, as I said before, um, my goal is to be accessible. Uh, my goal is to, to be open to conversations. And there are many people who are on this call here this evening um, who I've already talked with on the phone. Um, or been on Zoom calls with. Um, so I do want you all to know, be rest assured that, um, you know, I am available to you um, and I'll make time to, to have those conversations and to hear you. Uh, we may not always agree um, on a certain outcome, but I do want you to know that um, I am committed to uh, being open and committed to dialogue and interaction engagement with, with all of you. Um, so without further ado, we're going to kind of start jumping into things. Um, in um, well, actually, before we start, um, one kind of public announcement, um, as some of you may know, there was another variant um, of, of COVID-19 detected in Davis, uh, the, the P1 variant, which emerged in Brazil. So the point of me bringing that up is please still remain vigilant. As you may know, there is a um, Healthy Davis Together testing site right here in South Davis at Marguerite Montgomery Elementary School. Uh, it's free to get tested. It's super easy. Uh, and fast, so please take advantage of that, um, and we can continue as, as a community to, to work through this and beat this and slowly get back to, to normal. Um, so as I was saying, uh, this past election was the first time we had district elections. Uh, we were, there are five district, districts in Davis, and um, South Davis, as I said, is in District 5, um, and um, there are obviously the four other districts, and the, there were two others that came up. Uh, Vice Mayor Frerichs uh, was, was re-elected as well as Councilmember Arnold in this past election. Um, so the next slide, please. All right, so um, as Diane said earlier, we're gonna to touch on some citywide issues uh, that are happening right now. And then we're also going to, uh, to jump into uh, some, some things that are happening specific to South Davis. Um, as we go along, as, as Diane said, um, please put some questions in the chat. Also, feel free to put your name and email in there. We're going to capture that information. That'll help me uh, get a more robust email list so I can reach out and notify folks um, of meetings that are coming up or future events like this one here. Um, the meetings were on Facebook, Nextdoor, my own social media accounts and the city social media accounts, but also the emails would allow us to, to kind of do, you know, do an email blast uh, out to the community when, when something like this is coming up. Um, so the next slide, the first one we talk about um, are citywide construction projects. Um, if I can get the next slide, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so there were a handful of slides, um, with the exception of a short period of time during the pandemic. Um, our public public works team and engineering team worked diligently throughout um, to com complete and start com uh, construction projects. As you can see from the pictures here, the downtown restrooms were installed. Uh, there's one at e in the E Street Plaza and G Street Plaza. Um, there's another picture on the top right of the 1.3 mile Russell Boulevard bike path that was a partnership uh, with the new MOU with UC Davis uh, to redo that bike path. Uh, that opened up a few months ago. The Varsity Theater roof, which impacted downtown uh, in terms of construction street closures, um, is almost complete. Um, the, the big neon sign was taken down, but it definitely is, uh, is going back up. A um, couple open space uh, program pieces uh, right here in South Davis, actually. Um, there are building improvements and accessibility improvements to South Fort Preserve. Um, and then there's a new open space area uh, at the corner of F and Anderson, um, where you can, check, you can check those out. And again, the one in South Davis um, is, is accessibility and they're creating some areas for viewing and folks at ADA compliant type work um, on that space. And actually that, that was all done with uh, grant funds and open space funds. So a couple of uh, neat projects, one of them specific to South Davis um, that, that you can check out when you have time. Um, and then there's a couple other ones that you probably have seen or impacted the new one on uh, the sewer, the sewer maintenance hole replacement. 
um, on Fifth Street uh, running through downtown. Um, there's multiple other bike path improvements. Um, and again, there's that steward lift station happen on Fifth Street that, that is, is going on currently. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one thing that I talked about and heard a lot about from community members um, throughout uh, when I was running for this seat was the condition of, of roads. Um, so a couple things here. Um, the, excuse me, the, um, the city engineers uh, did an analysis of our city pavement conditions. Um, Mayor Partita and Council Member Carson were appointed to spearhead a subcommittee. Um, the bike path and street network is obviously critically important. It's why many of us live here uh, is for the bike infrastructure in the green belts. Um, and it's actually that is that asset is is valued at over three hundred million dollars. Um, so the city council was informed, you know, that the current funding for pavement and rehab wasn't going to to cover maintenance. Um, so again, council member um, Carson and Mayor Partita um, had a subcommittee to address this need, and now there's a ten year plan to achieve um, target pavement conditions, and ensure that Davis streets and bike paths are maintained for years to come. On the screen, you can see uh, some of that work that's there. There's a substantial investment, um, $308 million in street and bike path work. Um, the allocated maintenance funding at 5.1 million wasn't sufficient. So that's the part that was switched. Um, and again, the payment sum committee has identified solutions to closing the funding gap. Um, bike paths at $12.2 million over 10 years um, in the streets at 70 million over 10 years. So a lot of the conversations that we've had um, around potholes and green belts with big bumps taken out of them and all that type of work that's definitely being addressed. Um, and I look forward to to working with my colleagues um, in the city staff to to address those issues. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, development activity, as as you have may have seen, um, there has been a ton of development happening. Um, that, that's going on. The scale of the projects have been more of an urban in nature um, and has been more of type of infill work. Um, and that's kind of what we've, we've seen from the community and what conversations have been. Uh, some of the examples that you see on the board here, the top left is the new, um, the new Nugget headquarters uh, over there by the Mace Curve, the Marriott Hotel, which is um, over the intersection on Mason 2nd, Hyatt House, which uh, not too far from where I live, um, and then the Lincoln 40 project over on Olive Drive. Um, so the Lincoln 40 is nearing completion for a fall lease up. Um, the Hyatt uh, Hotel here in South, or not too far from where I am over here in South Davis is uh, slated to open actually in a couple of weeks. Um, so both of those are, are coming on, I'm coming online. Um, next slide. Other development projects that we're seeing around town, um, there has been significant contributions to housing stock uh, in both single family and multi multi-family housing. Um, there, again, there have been some recent hotel projects. If you look at this slide here, you can see the legend there um, on the bottom around potential land entitlements, land use entitlements that are approved, but subject to voter approval. The uh, one that's probably on the form, uh, front of everyone's mind as of late was DISC, uh, which was on the ballot this past November, which you see up there in the top right corner. Um, the, the ones that are, you know, close to where we are, uh, the 3820 Childs Road apartment uh, right on Childs right before um, the car dealerships. It used to be the old uh, UC Davis building, which is now torn down. Uh, Plaza 2555, uh, which was approved uh, by city council in the early uh, parts of December. Um, and then the Nishi property, which is, in, it's you know, close to South Davis, that's um, there as well. There's also the piece of um, the the um, gas station reconstruction that you've seen uh, right there on Mace, um, where they're redoing that gas station, making a large 7-Eleven. And then the other piece um, uh, that's happening is right beside McDonald's, that gate gas station will also be, un uh, be undergoing the 4480 Childs Road service station that you see there, another large um, redevelopment project in terms of that gas station redoing um, you know, this, its project right there. Um, so there's there's a lot of activity, as you probably have seen as well. There's a lot of activity on campus. Um, they're building some housing over there. And then in 2018, again, there was the, the MOU between the city uh, and the university um, in, in working together collaboratively to address a lot of the issues that, that we're facing. The Russell Boulevard um, bike path um, was one of the ones that I talked about earlier uh, being an example of that. Um, next slide.
Um, the downtown specific plan is coming up. That's one I, I, I served on the downtown specific plan committee. Um, it was a two, almost a three year, two and a half year long uh, project to um, to re envision our downtown. Um, and we were asked to look at a 40 year plan uh, and just look at all aspects of our downtown and how we can make it uh, more bike friendly, more user friendly, more pe uh, ped friendly, but also maintain the character of the town, um, of our downtown, and also find ways to help some of those businesses thrive. Um, so we were we were tasked with, um, you know, articulating the community's 2040 vision for the downtown. Uh, it was developed through an extensive and thorough public outreach process. Part of that, we did multiple charrettes. Uh, they were located in, in, one was at the church, one was at a uh, location downtown in a parklet where community members were, were able to come in this interactive process to really lay out uh, what they wanted to see downtown, uh, how they wanted development to look, what services they felt they needed, um, and, and how we could best do that. It was The other piece was that we had uh, property owners, landowners, and business owners who are part of this process. Um, and we really want to provide goals, policies, and actions to deliver this vision. Part of what we see sometimes, there was conflicting um, ideas around what, what policies were saying. So we wanted to create a, a document that really laid out um, a specific plan for folks who wanted to come in and try and develop or help with our downtown. The other piece that we focused on on this was creating public space. So some sort of public space that identified downtown as kind of a landmark. Um, so there's been a lot of conversation on what that could look like. Um, you know, one way streets, street closures, parklets, uh, more grass area, people to gather, um, all of that was part of it. So currently um, this is working through planning, the planning commission workshops um, and the planning commission is providing uh, comments and questions on various chapters of the plan. It's a, it's a very, um, long plan. Um, and then the next workshop is scheduled for April 28th. Um, if anyone is interested in, in watching that, they are obviously still through Zoom. Um, and these actually will continue through the summer. Um, and then on the city side, we're planning uh, to, to, in the process of pre preparing the CEQA document um, in anticipation of the draft EIR to come out this summer, summer of 2021. Um, and we're really hoping that the planning commission hearings are anticipated, you know, that they occur in late 2021 toward, towards the end of this year, and that it would come back to council in the first quarter of 2022 for adoption, um, which again would mean that it's, it's really a laying out this clear plan of how we want our downtown to look, how we want to interact with it, and how, how we want it to, to be sustainable. So if you have an interest in that and you haven't had a chance to to voice your opinion, please um, check out the meeting on the 28th of April, um, or you can reach out to any of us here to look at what some of the other meeting dates are and find ways to, to get connected to that process. Um, next slide, please. Um, another major piece that we have um, that we have been we've been working on um, is a reimagining public safety um, piece that has has been going on in Davis. Um, on December 15th, the City Council heard um, or got a, the, a report from the Temporary Joint Subcommittee, which was a group of people from the Human Relations Commission, the Police Accountability Commission, and the Social Services Commission, and representatives from each of those commissions created, um, did a ton of research and put together a comprehensive report about the current state of public safety in Davis. And in that document, um, they laid out, the committee uh, laid out nine recommendations um, for, the, for the council to consider on ways to move forward. Um, so you can see um, there's the first four of them are on the screen now, determine why racial disparities and arrest recommend, um, disparities and arrests, recommended charges and stops exist in Davis, uh, encourage Davis Police Department to dialogue with the Police Accountability Commission on the content of its use of force, evaluate the impact of de-escalation, crisis intervention, procedural justice, and implicit bias trainings, shift nonviolent service calls to unarmed personnel, and then the next one are the last um, five, um, which you can see here, reinvent the police community conversation, um, deprioritize, decriminalize, and offer restorative remedies for minor victimless offenses through warm handoff programs and expansion of the specialty court system and other measures. Um, work with county partners to build an integrated crisis now type model for behavioral health emergencies, uh, expand the city's community navigator workforce and commit to a vision of reimagined public safety. So. Um, on December 15th, uh, we all met, the council met, 
Um, and at the end of the meeting, uh, directed city staff to take all those nine recommendations and process them and come back with timelines around how, um, what we can do, um, what implementation may look like on them, and just to provide more of a background around each of those recommendations um, from and getting input from stakeholders on them. So that that happened um, on two weeks ago on April 6th. Uh, this item came back to city council. Um, and the city council made a couple of different, um, took it up a couple of different directions. One was moving homelessness services, homeless services out of uh, the police department and into the city manager's office. And we're going to touch on that a little bit later and lay out the reasons as to why, uh, what the benefits are for that. But another piece that came out that was really important was that there were two subcommittees that were created. Uh, the first subcommittee was uh, Mayor Partita and Council Member Arnold. Um, and they're going to tackle some of the issues directly related to racial disparities and uh, the nonviolent service calls. Um, each of these nine recommendations are in their own right. Um, you know, they're, they're big, they're meaty, they take a lot of work. Um, so we didn't want to get to bog down any of these um, by tackling them all at the same time. Uh, the subcommittee, the second subcommittee is Vice Mayor Frerichs and I, um, and we're focusing really on the, the mental health side of of um, the reimagining public safety. So we're going to be working uh, collaborative, uh, collaboratively with the county um, and looking at the crisis now model and mental health calls for service. Um, so we are going to, um, to work hand in hand with stakeholders to, to tackle that, that side of the recommendations. And as I said, Mayor Partita and Councilman Arnold will be working together um, to tackle um, some of the other issues that, that I laid out uh, previously. So we're looking forward to, to moving um, you know, in this direction and, and finding ways to, to better serve our community when it comes to public safety. Um, as you know, it's been an issue um, across this community, across the region, across this country. Um, and I think that you know, the way that we are, are laying out the next steps on how to move this forward um, with evidence-based, you know, focused on evidence-based approaches um, will serve us well. And, and I'm really excited uh, to work with my colleagues to tackle this and really excited to work with the community um, and, and other stakeholders um, to, you know, to, to be a leader in this conversation. Uh, next slide. So as I said before, um, the homeless services piece, and this is what we're, you know, what I, I want to focus on in terms of, um, as I talked earlier, what the end is, um, what ends are. So what are we trying to accomplish through this? So with homeless services, it really laid out, you know, what the transition of oversight from the police department to, uh, to the city manager's office. Um, it allows for focus on housing and social services. Um, it can allow staff to look at uh, and focus in on grant opportunities. Um, and it will facilitate more robust collaboration with other departments, such as parks and community services, community development, and others. Uh, and it can span um, coordination with Yolo County and other organizations. There are a couple other um, pieces that are coming into the works. 811 is another type of service that's coming online. Uh, the county and the city have worked together to hire in one clinician who actually started this week, uh, who's going to be working um, in that crisis now model. So um, we're definitely uh, you know, moving in that direction. Uh, we also have the Respite Center located at 1717 5th Street, um, and that's also under the city manager oversight. So it just made, it really did make a lot of sense for us to put those together um, and, and move it forward. And we'll touch on the Respite Center um, here in a little bit. Uh, next slide. Um, other pieces around homeless services. Uh, we, we have talked about in our goal setting sanctioned camping. Um, we've asked staff to research options around this. The council um, talked about it a little bit during our goal setting retreat. Uh, so that's definitely something that's coming up. The Davis Emergency Shelter Program um, is happening currently in apartments, and that's happening in lieu, um, in place in lieu of the the interfaith rotating uh, winter shelter. Obviously with, um, with COVID right now, um, things have changed and, and the Davis Emergency Shelter Program is, is filling that need. Uh, another play, uh, item that you may have seen is Paul's Place. Um, it's a pri private project. Uh, it's approved and moving forward to build function uh, specific facility, excuse me, with emergency beds, residential bedrooms, um, and micro apartments and a resource center. Um, and that one there will have um, the first floor will be the resource center with different types of programs, benefits, um, and health and human services, uh, as well as basic needs, food, shower, clothing, restrooms, and so on. 
Um, and again, it's, it has a multitude of the micro apartments, resource centers, bedrooms, all types of different stuff in there. And those are ones that if you need more information on that, I can direct you, um, you know, to someone that, that can then get you more information on that as well. Um, next slide. So in the chat, as we kind of go along here, we're gonna, then we have a couple of these actually, um, where we are going to uh, put some polls up. So in the chat, please feel free to um, either come up with your own issue facing the entire city. Uh, today, we have one about the entire city and one about South Davis, which we will get to here in a minute. Um, this is the last slide about um, the entire city. Um, so please feel free to, to fill that out. Um, as we go along, and then again, if there's a way for you, I'm not sure if, if there's a way for us to someone to type in their own, or if it's just items that we pulled up. Do you know, Diane? Yeah. So, Josh, there's an interactive poll right now. You know, uh, you can choose right now, and we'll give you the answer within seconds. Okay. Um, but additionally, we know that some of these categories are sort of broad. So, if you wanted to be specific about something, right. absolutely, please put that in the chat function. Okay. But if you give this a couple seconds, Josh, we yep. can actually give you the answer. <laughs> that sounds great. I will. Yeah, we have 14 of 37 people voted so far. Okay. And uh, by way of background for some of the people who are on, um, we have done, we had done a few years ago a um, scientifically proved, statistically valid survey of our entire community on many issues facing our residents. And this is a question that is always asked and it's open-ended in that situation. So we took the top answers from that two years ago so we could see if there was a, a significant difference between what people feel is an important issue in the city versus um, South Davis. So it will be the same question when we get to the South Davis part. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Carrie, are these the results? Unmuting would help. Uh, yes, these are the results. I gave it a few extra moments after um, no other votes were coming in, and then I have shared them with everybody. Okay, so Josh, th these are the results of your poll with the number one concern coming out as being traffic, and then it looks like there's a bit of a tie between the condition of the roads and homelessness. Right, yeah, and I imagine, and we'll, we'll touch on Mace here in a minute, and I imagine some of it, the traffic situation, especially in South Davis, as I, um, as I know from talking to folks for four or five months and living in South Davis um, and commuting back and forth, understand that's probably one of the biggest issues. Uh, we touched on homelessness a little bit. Um, and then, you know, I think what we can do here, we'll jump down, run through the rest of it, and then we can answer some specific questions. And then any of the pieces that come up that we don't cover around homelessness services, affordable housing, um, you have my, or on the front, we, uh, we have my contact information at the end, it'll be there as well. Um, and I would love to hear from you on any of the issues that come up here this evening. And again, that was one of the main pieces that I wanted to to get out of, uh, out of this evening was to be able to just, you know, get my face in front of, of the community and folks who may not have had a chance to meet me um, or have contact information um, so that we can have um, a conversation as we, as we move through some of these issues that we're all facing here. Um, so I can get that. Okay, perfect. Uh, can we go to the next slide? One minute, Josh. I'm just. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. I'm sorry. I am trying to. Um, there we go. I will be right. Okay. Back in business. Thank you. Great. Thank you all for working with us. This is the first. Um, this is the first district meeting that we have done. Um, so I, I thank uh, all the city staff. We, we've never, uh, I don't think, done a, a, a Zoom meeting uh, like this uh, with the city council member. I know I'm the first one, so I appreciate everyone who's in attendance being patient with us as we as we work through this um, and, and uh, find our way around it. And it definitely won't be the last for, for me and hopefully other council members will do the same. Um, so District 5, um, a couple of the big pieces that I pulled out I want to touch on here this evening. I know are issues that, you know, when I ran uh, for this seat that a lot of people wanted to talk to me about. Um, so Pacifico, 
uh, the Pacifico uh, Housing Co-op here in South Davis, uh, Mace Boulevard. And then there are a few major construction projects that are happening um, that are in this district that I wanted to provide some information uh, for folks here this evening. Uh, so you have, you, you, you know when they're going on and what's happening with them. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, so Pacifico, the Pacifico Housing Co-op is located on 1752 Drew Circle. Uh, this is a housing co-op that's owned by the city. As you can see from the, the screen, there are four, uh, there are four units, four buildings. Uh, A and B are not occupied. They have not been occupied for uh, at least a decade now. Uh, C and D are occupied. Uh, Pacifico uh, is, is, a, is a low income housing that the city, the city provides. Uh, it's currently managed by, we contract out to Yolo County Housing, um, and Yolo County Housing is uh, looking to end their management agreement when it is up uh, this fiscal year uh, in a few months here. So um, with, with the housing shortage uh, and homelessness issues that we have in town, um, as well as some other issues that have been happening in that area, uh, this has come up as a community concern uh, for a lot of folks who, who live in that neighborhood, but also for um, folks who live in Pacifico. Um, it's not just an issue for um, residents who, who, who live uh, around there in a couple of the cul-de-sacs. Uh, there's also, um, you know, work that we can do as a city uh, to provide better services to uh, the residents who live in Pacifico. Um, so this came to, um, to city council. Actually, let me continue on Pacifico real quick. So each building uh, has 24 bedrooms, uh, has a ground floor kitchen area, a laundry room, a dining room, a multi-purpose room, and communal restrooms. Um, and the city council requested a full building assessment to understand what the existing conditions are. As I said before, A and B are not being used right now. Uh, they have not been for 10 years, and there's been a, a multiple, uh, multiple reasons uh, as to why. Uh, but we really want to dive in and figure out what is happening with them uh, so that we can figure out what to do um, and, and either get those buildings back up and get them online to provide housing for vulnerable populations um, or find a way to uh, invest in them for rehabilitation um, or figure out what we can do so that it's just not too large buildings that are um, inhabitable uh, that we own. Um, so in, um, if you want to click to the next slide. In January of this year, uh, January 19th, the City Council took up Pacifico as an agenda item um, and approved um, two different uh, ways forward. Um, it, it was clear from the conversation that the, the Council wanted to continue uh, looking at Pacifico as housing um, and not tear them all down, um, but wanted to figure out what we could do. And the way to do that was for us to go down two different paths, uh, two uh, requests for qualifications uh, were released. Uh, the first one was for building inspections. So that was, this, we, we wanted to know exactly what's happening in all four buildings, not just the two buildings that are, that are not being occupied right now. Um, so it's a full inspection inside, outside of all four buildings. Um, and that will allow us to step back and get a better view um, and understanding of what needs to happen in order to get those properties um, up and running to a standard that we that that's acceptable, um, especially in the two that that aren't being occupied. Um, so that that uh, qualification that request qualification is closed, uh, and those inspections should be happening in the next couple of weeks. And those will be public reports uh, once they are done. So that one um, is is definitely happening um, and should be the results should be there soon. Um, the other request for qualification, uh, the, the applications are due on uh, April 23rd, and this is for property management, so to replace Yolo County housing. Um, and there was definitely, you know, some focus around a more holistic approach to management of that property and really trying to focus on um, management companies who have experiencing experiences dealing uh, with managing a similar type property and also with similar challenges um, that Pacifico has. Um, on March 3rd, uh, Mayor Partita and I are the subcommittee to Pacifico. Um, and on March 3rd, we met, uh, organized through Yolo County Housing, uh, a, a series of, of meetings with residents at Pacifico. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really productive. Um, and I am, I am really happy that we took the time to sit and, and listen to people that live there. It was really important for 
um, Mayor Partita and I to, to find a time to meet with the residents. And for us as policymakers and decision makers um, to sit and have conversations with the population of people who are gonna be most affected by the decision that we're, that we're gonna make. Um, so there was a lot of, of conversation. Um, I wrote down some of the words um, when we were in that meeting um, and they range on all ends of the spectrum. Um, words as grateful. Um, one, one person said, this place saved my life. Um, another person said, I'm just so grateful to just have housing, to have a roof over my head. We asked, um, asked a question to one of the groups, where would you be if you, if you weren't, if, if this was not here, if the city did not have Pacifico? Um, and only two people in the first group answered, and the one person said, I'd, I'd be living in my car, and the other person said they would be homeless. Um, but that's, it wasn't all rosy. There was definitely frustration. Um, there was frustration around case management and access to services, um, access to kind of upgrade housing. So to, to get out of Pacifico and go to that next level and the availability of it um, and frustration around management issues. So there was, we, we heard, you know, all sides of, of the lived experience at Pacifico. Um, and that really is, is a way for us to better understand what's happening there, but also make a better decision when we look at property management companies um, and people that can come in because they're the ones that are interacting with and managing this property and, and working with residents every single day. Um, so it's important that, that we get that right. Um, and this is uh, this Pacifico um, subject, as I said, is, is not just something that's specific to, um, to neighbors. Um, it, it is, and they're impacted. Um, and it's also for, you know, obviously the residents that, that live there as well. So we're looking forward to, to having that come back to us. Um, the timelines that you see here on the screen are for, um, you know, when they close, but we'll have a better understanding on um, the inspection side of it um, soon. So um, please look out for information coming down uh, regarding that as well. Um, next slide. All right, um, the issue that a lot of folks here in South Davis, including myself, um, deal with on a regular basis, if not daily, uh, Mace Boulevard. So first I wanna say um, thank you to um, everyone who has reached out to me um, and, and provided their, their own experiences with Mace. Um, and, and those experiences range from um, complete frustration um, with what has happened with Mace Boulevard um, all the way to I want to see Mace Boulevard stay the way that it is um, and, and that's and that's really the conversations that I've had um, and it's been all over the board um, so I appreciate everyone who's on this call or on this zoom here this evening um, for taking your time out not that it's just only people here to listen about Mace, Mace Boulevard um, but also for taking time out of your day to to send emails and to respond back and forth with me um, and I can say that my experience with, uh, with all of you has been, um, has been respectful um, and has been one in which we're, we're trying to work together to find a solution to this problem. Um, I do understand uh, this has been happening um, and it's been happening uh, in your life for a number of years. Um, and I want you to know that I hear you um, and I'm doing my best uh, to work with my council colleagues, uh, to work with all city staff, and to work with the county and other stakeholders to try and come up with a solution to Mace Boulevard that works. Um, so I want you to know that that that, that doesn't fall on deaf ears um, and that every conversation that I have, um, I take to heart and help that you know inform uh, my decision-making process. We all have different interactions with Mace. Um, I live um, west of Mace, so I'm not crossing it every day. Uh, then you have people who live on Mace and their needs and their desires for what, you know, what to happen with Mace Boulevard is different than people who live um, east of Mace um, having to get over. So there's, it, it's complex. There are a whole lot of issues um, that, that are happening with it. And I know that you are all, uh, people are well aware of what those issues are. Um, so um, Vice Mayor Frerichs and I are the, um, the subcommittee to Mace Boulevard. Um, and we have met twice uh, in this, this year with um, the county and other uh, stakeholders. Uh, we met on February 18th. Uh, we also met on March 10th uh, to discuss 30, the 30% design and next steps to further review the project. Um, I know there has been some emails going around uh, in the past few days, some updates from the county. Uh, and that's a lot of basically what I was gonna talk with you uh, about here this evening. 
um, and, and provide you with some of these timelines that are coming up. Um, so in those meetings, we all, you know, sat and, and talked about and brainstormed um, what we, from the county perspective and city perspective, what we're hearing from the community. Um, and out of that, um, out of that meeting, there was direction um, that's now being worked on by city staff uh, for further review of the project um, and to work with the project consultants on revising and looking at that 30% design and to do traffic modeling for um, a bunch of different um, uh, recommendations that have come out of those meetings and that have come out of the county's uh, presentations um, and recommendations that the city has come forward. Um, so there has also been um, the traffic modeling around the traffic signal pilot location at several locations, um, including a location in Solano County. Um, and we're, we're trying to work with Solano County um, to figure out if that's a possibility, if they're willing to do that, or if that is even the right way uh, to move that forward. We're also at the same time uh, reaching out to and trying to set up meetings with Caltrans. Uh, we know that Mace Boulevard is heavily impacted by the traffic on I-80, uh, most of it coming off Pedrick Road and then up through Solana County and over Mace. So it's definitely a multi-pronged approach around, um, you know, what we're trying to do with Mace Boulevard um, and address it in a holistic way uh, with all the factors that are contributing to um, the experiences that, that folks are having. Um, so the Vice Mayor Frerichs and I, um, along with Supervisor Provenza, will be meeting with representatives from Solano, Solano County to discuss some short-term short fixes to I-80 um, and the Pedrick Road exit that definitely impact conditions on Mace Boulevard. Um, and then there are going to be additional meetings that are, are being set up with multiple agencies and counties to discuss longer term solutions to the I-80 corridor. So I understand um, oftentimes saying, well, we're going to we have to have a meeting to figure out what's going on with I-80. Um, and rightfully so, there's concern around how long that can take. Um, and I definitely hear that. But there are options um, that we can that will be presented um, when we get have our meeting in the first week of June. Um, that address really short-term, easy uh, fixes that we can deal with with Caltrans on I-80 to, to model what that traffic would look like to help with Mace Boulevard. So it's not just pushing it off uh, until we get some sort of solution from Caltrans or from the state around I-80 in that the mess of all the lanes, um, but there are short-term solutions that we are going to work with, uh, work on um, to try and, and, and do this together. Um, as I said before, we're looking at a meeting in the first week of June. Uh, that's a great time, again, um, to provide all the feedback and what, what some of the, um, what the staff recommendations are at that point, get community feedback, and then we are going to move that, um, hopefully, to council. The next step would be to council thereafter. Um, so, you know, please know that this is being worked on. Um, I know over the past year, it, it has seemed like nothing has been going on, um, and with, you know, city staff being moved and pulled in all directions um, and their job descriptions changing uh, to deal with the pandemic. There has been has been meetings, there has been work, there has been uh, workshops um, of elected officials to to get together uh, to, to hear what the concerns are um, and what you have voiced uh, to put together a project to, to finally um, move this forward. Um, so I if you have your again email addresses all that in there you have my email address um, I'm more, more than happy to, to jump into specific, uh, the specifics of what some of those options are um, and, and can carve out time you know, to do that. If you shoot me an email, um, I'm more than happy to. Um, next slide. And we're almost done with slides. Um, construction projects, uh, there are two big ones that are happening that are really related to District 5. Well, there's other ones too, but these are uh, the two main ones. Um, there's a project that's happening, which we there were a few community meetings um, that, that occurred. Uh, to the picture on the right, you see that that is um, a connection from Olive Drive. Um, eventually, when when this is obviously complete, as in right now, and as is now, the Olive Drive exit um, uh, going eastbound is closed permanently. Uh, right now, it's closed, but not. Um, you know, they'll open back up for other issues until this is done. Uh, this is uh, a walkway that's going to connect or bikeway as well from Olive Drive up to Poline uh, for a connection there. Um, so that one's happening. Um, 
it's a it's a huge project um, that that will connect all of drive to um, to pole line um, a lot of this there are a lot of students who attend uh, montgomery elementary school uh, who live on olive drive um, and as you can imagine for them to ride a bike um, from olive drive to montgomery they were going over richards and over the overpass that way which is, is not a safe route to school uh, so this project uh, is going to help alleviate some of that as well as better connectivity for south davis residents to to downtown um, with with this connection um, the one on the left that you see is um, is the I-80 Richards Boulevard project. It um, is under revision right now. The timing on that is pending. Um, again, this is also um, a District 5 area uh, where, you know, they're looking at on-ramps, off-ramps to help alleviate some of that traffic over there. Um, there. There were a couple of plans that were put out and now they are being revised. So I don't have a timeline on that one, but I can I can commit that when I we have a timeline and what that project is finally going to look like, I can get that information to you as well, given that that is a, you know, a huge uh, impact on traffic getting um, from South Davis into downtown as one of the only two ways to do that. Um, so please you know, stay tuned for that. Um, the next slide talks about uh, the improvements that are connected to the rich, uh, the Olive Drive, the pole line Olive Drive connection. Um, so what you see here is a, there gonna be a number of safety improvements that are happening uh, in South Davis around Margaret Montgomery Elementary School that are, it's all part of that Olive and pole line connection. Um, and this information came from um, the, the community outreach um, that was done in the walk bike audit report. Uh, so we've done a couple different things. That's going to start this summer. Uh, the goal is to start in July of, of this summer and end before school starts in August, uh, August 25th. Um, briefly, uh, from Farragut to Lillard, there's going to be improvements in crosswalk, crosswalk ramps to adhere to ADA type work. Um, ladder style striping, Danbury and Lillard, there's going to be restriping to new city bike lanes and the parking areas. That's kind of the map on the right. Um, if you can zoom in on your own computer, you can probably see it there. I tried to provide you with, uh, you can see Marguerite Montgomery right there um, where this is. Um, they're going to be replacing on Lillard uh, painted median with ADA compliant pedestrian ramps and ladder style crosswalks um, and a bunch of different type of striping um, happening there. They're also going to do, if you look at the picture on the left, um, you'll see there's bulb outs. Uh, that's a picture of downtown. Um, and they're doing that, uh, the bulb outs over um, at Lillard and Drummond. Um, if you ever at that intersection, it's a really large intersection, big wide um, area where a lot of students are, are coming um, from the north um, over and then crossing that intersection to get to Montgomery. Um, so they are doing a bunch of work at that intersection as well to make those crosswalks a little bit shorter and to make them more accessible, um, you know, for, for folks on bikes and definitely more safe for, for students uh, riding to and from school. Um, the next slide. Uh, this one here just touches a little bit on District 5, so we can run that again and then we'll um, around issues related to, the, to District 5. If there's any different, uh, please take a minute, pop those in. Um, and like I said, I will, um, when we get this, I'll have the information after this meeting. Um, and hopefully I have everyone's contact information. You've had the chance to put it, um, you know, in the chat with your name and your email. Uh, oftentimes people have an email that doesn't have their name in it. And I want to make sure I know who I'm talking to. Um, and I can, like I said, I'll reach out um, with uh, information from these polls, and also I can try my, I'll try my best to uh, get some answers to any of the questions that pop up in the chat uh, that we, that I didn't address this evening. Um, I can, if I have your email there, I can reach back out to you directly and provide an answer on a question that, that I, we didn't get an answer to, a, a chance to, um, to answer this evening. Um, so take one minute, uh, if you don't mind, and do that, and then we, um, we will jump into a couple of questions and go from there. And then are there, um, for Diane or Barbara, are there questions that have popped up that are 
um, that I can address in the last 10 minutes that I think where the last part were ways for folks here to sign up and, and stay um, uh, stay in, in connection with with city with the city with myself. Are there other issues? Um, Yes, um, I can tell you uh, essentially, and Barb, you help me if I don't get it right. Um, we have a question about what the meaning of victimless crime would be. We have a question about what we're doing about the homeless people who have pets. Um, mm -hmm. A question about burying the power lines, <clears throat> excuse me, that exist on the east side of Mace. Um, concerns about noise, particularly traffic noise. And then um, uh, a fair amount of concern about Mace Boulevard, specifically yeah. uh, specific questions about whether you're going to talk about to specific aspects of that tonight, Josh, if you want to answer that question or not, um, or if you're going to specifically review the 30% design. Got it. So a couple of things um, around the homelessness and pets. Uh, the respite center does have um, uh, the respite center has crates in an area for people who are uh, who are there to 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 be there with their pets. Um, so, but in terms of the housing side, again, I think that's part of the issue that we're we're looking at when we look at housing in general um, is is where folks are able to go. You know, at night, the respite center is a daytime respite center. Um, the the direction that the city council gave city staff around sanctioned camping um, can go a little way to provide you know some sort of relief there where they have somewhere to go. But during the day, um, there there is uh, there are um, uh, uh, temperature conditioned rooms at the respite center. Um, and I went and visited the respite center, uh, met Dago there uh, when I met him the first time and saw, um, um, I think three or four people who were there during the day utilizing, um, utilizing crates and hanging out with their pets, um, you know, at the respite center. Um, but I can follow up. I imagine the name is in the chat. I can get some more information out on for, uh, on that for you if that didn't cover it. And um, we can, we can circle back on that um, at another time, if that works. And you said, what was the, you said, what else, Diane? I'm sorry. I think, um, Josh, possibly if you could say whether or not you're going to review the 30% design yeah. tonight. So 30, yeah, so the 30%. Any, so, any of the specifics about, sure. so you talk about the details of any of the conditions. Yeah, so as, as many, as, as most people know, right, the 30% design from the city, we, what happened was the city had the 30% design, as you guys well know, um, and then the county had, has, um, uh, had their idea of what they want to see happen, which was was generated from a ton of community feedback. So in the meetings that we had um, on uh, back in March, um, we took item by item what were being identified as problem areas. So when you look at, um, I know somebody brought up San Marino, um, and what is it that's happening there with the blinking lights? What can we do to address that? And that definitely, um, that will definitely be in um, the report that comes back to the community um, that city staff is working on. Other area around concrete barriers between uh, the residents who live on the west side of Mace, um, who have the concrete barriers in front of their homes, absolutely, where that was brought up and looking at ways to, to get rid of it, ways to find, you know, to have better accessibility to people who are uh, living on the west side of Mace and what that looks like. Um, Right-hand turn lanes have come back up, um, two lanes each way, obviously, as you guys well know, but I don't have, we, we conveyed what we thought um, with the county uh, we all sat in the room and said, hey, we want to look at what the options are for, for you know, two lanes each way. What, what does that look like and what needs to happen? What happens if when the concrete's all taken out? What happens as the county, what they had was the, you know, bike lane each way on one side. What, what does that look like? So there, all of those options are now being modeled by the city staff and by the engineers. Um, and I can, you know, those options are not off the table. Um, I, again, I... I hear you from emails and through conversations over the phone um, and through Supervisor Provenza um, around the many conversations that he has had with you um, in relation to Mace Boulevard. And that definitely is conveyed in those meetings. 
Um, so without a doubt, there's, you know, the specifics around um, what, you know, this evening, what was put forward, those have, were all on the table and we were looking at them. Um, as, as in terms of short-term fix, I think somebody or mentioned something about a short-term fix. On I-80, there's definitely some, some work, I think, that can be done around um, managing the, the five-lane to the three-lane uh, situation that happens there um, in ways to, uh, to, to model only having three lanes. Uh, that would would help with that backup of you know it going from three lanes to five lanes to three lanes really unnecessarily um, and are, are there ways that we can model um, that in the short term uh, to show that any type of those improvements permanently would would positively help uh, the traffic flow not only there but also from diverting traffic from 80 to Mace Boulevard um, so those are definitely part of the conversations that we're going to have. Um, when we have our um, our meetings with the county um, and with um, uh, with Caltrans, because the county is impacted by those decisions that we make as well, because obviously they're traveling through Solano County and over to uh, to Mace Boulevard. Um, what was what uh, what else was there? I'm sorry. I think you mostly covered it, Josh. Okay. Um, you. Um... I think you said this, so I'll just restate that you expect that community meeting specifically on the topic of MACE to be in the first week of June, correct? Yes. And, and that will be the opportunity. We'll have the um, engineers and we'll have the presentation of the 30% design again. Yeah, it would. Yes, exactly. All that's expected to all come back in June for commute for a community meeting and input on what that on what that the next level or the next design looks like. That is not um, a permanent, that's not the group coming back to the community and saying, here's everything that we're doing. Um, it's provided back to the community for feedback and then back to uh, the work group of Vice Mayor Ferrix, myself and Supervisor Provenza. Um, and then that would, the next step from there would be it goes to city council uh, to move along any of those recommendations. Um, so yes, and that again, that's the first week in June uh, is what we're targeting. Um, and again, that's part of the reason why I want to get everyone's emails um, and contact information to to be able to to reach out and let folks know. Um, I have my um, I have a social media account on Facebook as well on Instagram, um, and I know that I have I'm on uh, next door as well, um, and can post those there. But also want to make sure that I. I connect with people who don't use social media um, so that they're informed on some of these issues as well. And one other quick thing that I'll add, um, Josh, because you weren't with us last year when we were working on this issue, um, we work with the county so that next door in El Macero also puts out our notices about Mace Boulevard because we can't access that. And we have the list from every community meeting we've ever held on the topic of Mace. Right. If someone wrote their name on the check-in list, we will send an email specific to that topic. Perfect. So we do, we do a thorough job with that. Okay. Okay. And I think um, you understand, but I will just express so everyone knows that we do see what's in the chat and um, our community members are expressing a lot of frustration and a lot of um, dislike of very specific parts of that project. So I think that yeah. meeting will be well attended. Yeah, and I and again I, I want to make sure I I'm you know I think we're able to print out um we've written it all down for you. Yeah, perfect. And and I can um you know look at all that and I've heard from from many people who are on here tonight uh sharing um information about Mace Boulevard. Not everyone uh, on this tonight is is on here to about Mace Boulevard, but I I, I do want to make sure that again, I understand that you're frustrated. Um I have been many times stuck on Mace Boulevard. Um, and, and, uh, now cause I don't live uh, east of it. I can, I know I choose when and, um, when not to, to drive over there, but I know that not everybody has that option. Um, so I, I ask for your, I know that you've been patient. I, I see that in the comments that you're making. Um, but this is the first that you and I are going to work together on this. So I ask for your patience with me and, 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 uh, your trust in me to, to move this forward in a way that we can come to some sort of resolution. Uh, believe me, I, I don't want to spend the next three years of my time on city council, you know, worrying about Mace Boulevard. So I, I am committed to, to working with you and finding a solution to this um, and being open and, and transparent 
to move this along so that everyone feels heard. So um, I, I really appreciate um, all your comments this evening. I will um, go through what is in the chat and, and, and um, over the next, uh, uh, through Friday and this weekend, uh, try and reach out and get information to you if, you, if there's information that you still need. Um, and please feel free to reach out to me with any other questions. I know we have a couple of slides that show how you can do that. Um, so there's um, well, other ways you can sign up. There is this piece here. Diane, I don't know if you have more information on this than I sure, do. Sure, sure. Um, this is the homepage of the city of Davis, the screenshot, and the big large buttons on the right. There's one that says sign up for e-notification. And when you go on that page, there's, there's several dozen choices. You can sign up to be notified for all of them or only one of them. So there's a choice now if you, we just added it, if you'd like to be notified by email when um, topics or meetings come up specific to District 5. So we suggest that you sign up for that. There's a separate one for Mace Boulevard. You can sign up for that one also. And um, we are very um, excited to be able to use e-notification as another way, as Josh said, to social media. So that is a good option. And if you could show the next slide, Carrie. Um, this other uh, opportunity to sign up for emergency notifications in particular, I like to call the, everyone's attention to this. Um, signing up for those emergency notifications are the way that you will get the type of um, notices, for example, water main breaks, um, uh, very difficult traffic um, car accidents that close roads. We had some need to communicate with our residents over fires recently. And um, the emer emergency notification gives you the opportunity to choose, I want a phone call, I want an email, or I want a text. Um, and that's also, there's also a link there if you want to hear directly from pg &E. So this is critically important as a way for us to communicate in the moment instantly with our uh, community members. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. So in wrapping up, I just, um, a couple of things. Um, these, this is not the only type of meeting that I'm gonna hold. Um, you know, over Zoom, and once we're able to, to do it in person, I'll definitely be doing that. Um, what I'll do is, as, as some of the issues come back in, you saw some of the timelines that are there, um, some of the, the key South Davis issues that are coming up um, related to, again, the things, Mace Boulevard, Pacifico, construction projects, um, any of those pieces, um, I, I can also, and will also create Zooms um, to have a community conversation specific to that issue, um, so we can have that conversation um, you know, an hour long conversation around that uh, to hear feedback and concerns. So as we as we move through this, I want you to know that um, they're not all going to be kind of this high level overview of what's happening in the city as a whole and then overview of uh, what's happening in South Davis. We will do I will do specific meetings uh, related to important um, subjects that are coming up and topics that are happening within our community and specifically in District 5. Um, so again, um, you know, that tonight's meeting was again, a way for me to, to kind of just get to, you know, get my face out there, my contact information out there, which is what you see here on the screen now. Um, and also to get your information, uh, so that we can have more, uh, lines of open communication. So, um, I look forward to those other meetings. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. I, I really do appreciate you taking time, um, out of your day. Uh, you know, to, to get on another Zoom, which most of us are doing all day anyway. Um, but I, I look forward to working with all of you uh, in, in this capacity, my new role as a council member. And I look forward to, uh, to moving District 5 uh, forward and, and, and having a voice um, for the commute, for, you know, for our community as a whole and also for South Davis. So thank you all uh, for coming here this evening. Please make sure you reach out with any questions, comments, concerns, anything you have for me. Um, and, and I look forward to... Um, to the day when we can do this in person uh, and not over a computer screen. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your night and uh, we'll be in touch soon.